Uh, hello, and welcome to a special edition of uh, this this topic uh, YouTube series internet thing. Um, we're going to be looking at making fertilizers in the lab today. I thought it'd just be good to have a look at the process of titration. Um, I'll run through the the detailed bits and pieces on the board in a moment, but donning a pair of safety specs. So titration is a way of working out the concentration of an unknown solution. So let's assume that I know the concentration of this ammonia solution, but I don't know the concentration of this sulfuric acid solution. I can use titration to work out the concentration of this because I know that the ammonia and the sulfuric acid react in a precise ratio. I'm going to put the sulfuric acid, first of all, in this tall piece of apparatus here, which is called a burette. I'm going to fill that right to the top. And then I'm going to run a bit through this jet here, knocking out any air bubbles that appear. And then that's just going to be sitting right on zero on the scale at the top there. So that's my burette full of acid, all ready to go. Now I need to measure out my ammonia. I use this piece of apparatus called a pipette. It's a long thin tube. It's got one line on it there. The line shows us exactly where 25 centimeters cubed is. I fill it with this pipette filler, which I wind like that, and then the solution fills up all the way to the top. I'm actually going to take that off and then slowly come down here, eye level on the brown line if my thumb would just give me a little bit. There we go. I might have missed it by a, a minute bit there, but the first titration is often rough anyway. So we run that all the way into the flask there. And I'm going to add a little bit of indicator. The indicator I'm using today is methyl orange. That goes a nice orange colour in an a, uh, in a oops a nice orange colour in a uh, in a base uh, in an acid as you might have seen there it goes uh, a kind of pinky colour. Okay, so I'm going to start adding acid. You can see as soon as I add the acid to the base, we get some pink colour. But when I swirl it, that goes away. Almost. There we go. So I'm going to add the acid a little bit slower. And I can just control that tap there so it's coming in at about one drop a second. And that's gone much sooner than I expected. Um, that's gone after only four centimeters cubed. Okay. So four centimeters cubed of acid gave me uh, a color change there with the indicator. Uh, I thought the acid was about uh, about one mole per dm cubed, but we'll, we'll find out uh, what it is in a moment. We'll we'll do a calculation. Okay, so that's that's how we do a titration. Um, I'll take a reading from the burette, and that tells me the volume of acid that I've added. Okay, um, I'm just going to do it again. Give the flask a good rinse here. And I'm going to measure another load of ammonia. But this time, I'm not going to use any indicator. And the reason for that is I want to get a pure sample of 
the, the mixture between, uh, that's formed when the acid and the ammonia react. Okay, so last time I did this, it was exactly four moles, uh, four mils, four centimeters cubed of acid to add. So I'm going to add exactly four again. There we are. So that should be a nice neutral solution there. And what I'm going to do now is bring in Mr. Bun Bunsen burner here. Roar away nicely there. Um, I've got a beaker of water which will boil in a moment. And when that starts boiling, the, um, the salt that I made from the, from the titration is going to start evaporating. So I'm going to pop that in there. get my fingers away there we go that's just gonna be on camera there um, so hopefully that will evaporate throughout the rest of the talk I'm just gonna turn it down a little bit so it's not quite so roary okay so the process that we were using there was called titration. The tall piece of apparatus with the tap at the bottom and markings down the side is called a burette and I put my sulfuric acid in there and under that we have a conical flask And into that, I put my ammonia solution. And then lastly, I measured my ammonia solution. With a pipette. Um, yes, fellas. Youth actually had an idea yesterday um, about a fundraiser of a staff water balloon fight. Um, I'm, I'm really not interested, thank you. Am I interested in a staff water balloon fight? There we go. It's a real show, folks. Mm. Right. Um, so pipettes come in a variety of shapes and sizes. This was a 25 centimeter cube pipette, which means it can measure exactly 25 centimeters cubed and, and, no, and no more, no less. Whereas the burette can measure anything from 0 to 50 centimeters cubed, obviously that's the point. We don't know how much acid we're going to add until we've added it. Okay, um, so let's just run through the, the calculation for the titration. This is something we might have done in topic four, but since titration comes up again as, as part of topic 15, it makes sense to recap it. And quite often the titration calculation questions are based around uh, the, the, the demo that I've just done. Um, so we know that we have one mole per dm cubed ammonia. Um, we don't know the concentration of the sulfuric acid. We used a pipette to measure the ammonia, so I had 
25 centimeters cubed of ammonia. Um, and then we used a burette to measure the sulfuric acid. I used exactly four centimeters cubed of that. Okay. So when we do the calculation, well, we've got all the information about ammonia. <coughs> so we start with that. I can work out moles of ammonia. I can work out moles from concentrations and volumes by doing concentration times volume over a thousand. Why the thousand? Well, because volume is measured in centimeters cubed, whereas concentration is moles per dm cubed. So I need to convert centimeters cubed to dm cubed. Sometimes you'll see it written in books as uh, concentration times volume divided by a thousand. So we do the volume over a thousand as a separate step. Of course, it's exactly the same maths. So I've got concentration of one times 25 over a thousand gives me um, 2.5. Uh, sorry, I was going to use standard form, but there's no need for it, is there? Uh, 0.025 <coughs> moles. Uh, okay. So the next step is to think about how much sulfuric acid we've got. Well, in order to work that out, I need a balanced symbol equation. So let's write that. Uh, I'll stick it at the top here. So ammonia NH3 reacts with H2SO4 to make ammonium sulfate. Okay, well, the ammonium ion has a 1 plus charge, and sulfate ion has a 2 minus charge, so I need two ammoniums in brackets to cancel the charge of one sulfate, and that means that I need to balance the equation with a 2 in front of the NH3. Now that's crucial to our calculation because it tells us that two moles of ammonia is needed to make uh, needed to react with one mole of sulfuric acid so that we have to use that two to one ratio when calculating the moles of h2so4 two of that reacts with one of that so in other words sulfuric acid is going to be half as many moles as ammonia so the moles of h2so4 will be a half times the moles of ammonia and now we know how many moles of ammonia uh, of sulfuric acid we had well we can rearrange this equation to work out its concentration um, again I need to use a factor of a thousand to convert my volume into dm cubed so it's a thousand times point uh, 125.0125 all over 4 which is not an answer I have in my head 0.0125 times a thousand and by 4 3.125 units of concentration moles per dm cubed Okay, well, our, um, our reaction here is, is going steadily, not very fast. If you've ever wondered why I've never used this technique in the lab, here you are. It takes huge amounts of time and makes very little progress. Unfortunately, this is the AQA-approved method of making crystals from a salt. AQA never actually did this in a lab situation, I'm guessing. Um, it will work. It's, it's just very slow. We'll come back to this in the next, um, the next video. Thank you.